thanks for coming. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Luke for inviting me to speak here today and uh, Joe Krogan for the illustration uh, there. Uh, my name is Tommy Gakinwan and I'm a photographer. Uh, when I tell people that, the question they usually ask is, do you do that full time? And I can understand why, because photography is a very competitive field now more than ever. But the answer is yes. And the purpose of me talking to you here today is to explain how I got here and to talk about how and why I do what I do. So first of all, um, for those unfamiliar with my work, I'll show a few photographs and talk a bit about my style before telling the story of um, how I came to work professionally. Uh, my story is, I think, a bit unconventional and as much about luck as anything else. So when I was asked to give this talk, I was at first doubtful as to whether you'd be able to take anything from it by way of practical advice. But I started to write things down and uh, realised that maybe this isn't true. So I'll tell the story of how I got started um, and then talk a bit more from a practical business point of view. And at the end, I'll take questions. Uh, I was once in a meeting with a graphic designer who asked me about my academic background. And I told him that I had studied English literature here at Glasgow Uni. And he asked me, do you take pictures in an English literature kind of way? Um, the question struck me as strange at first, but the more I thought about it, the more it made sense. I'm interested in stories, but rather than literature or other photography, uh, my main inspiration is film. Uh, particularly the work of um, Wong Kar Wai and uh, Michael Mann. Uh, so these are photographs which um, I think the, the influence of these directors um, shows. Uh, the colour palette here is very, very Michael Mann and his subjects tend to be sort of lonely men, I suppose. <laughs> and uh, this one was uh, a fashion shoot which was quite directly inspired by um, Wong Kar Wai's film In the Mood for Love. Um, many people make comments about my photos along the lines of uh, I love the idea here or a nice concept, but I don't really understand that because there's no concept to my work. Um, Susan Sontag once wrote that the ultimate wisdom of the photographic image is to say, there's the surface. Now think, or rather feel, intuit what is beyond it, what the reality must be like if it looks that way. And I always thought that's the, the best way of putting it. And it's the only concept <coughs> that my work makes any claim to. Um, I hardly ever use flash, except on corporate shoots where it's necessary. And I only work with available natural light. Uh, like the two directors I mentioned, I prefer to shoot mostly at night. And this isn't only because the light and color of the night is more interesting to me, but also because I think that people are different at night. I started taking photographs when I was 14. And from the ages of 14 to 18, photography was somewhere between a hobby and an obsession. I carried the camera everywhere. I took photographs of everyone I met. And when I was 17, I came here to study. And at the beginning of my second year, I entered an essay competition, which was open to students of the arts faculty. Um, to cut a long story short, I ended up going on a 10-day student exchange to Pakistan. Uh, when I found out that I'd be going, I took out a student overdraft and used it to buy my first digital SLR, which was a Nikon D70. Uh, the cameras I'd been using up until then had got gradually more complex, and so by the time I bought this fully manual camera, I knew how to use it, but I didn't know why. Uh, I'd never read anything about photography, and everything I'd learned was just trial and error. Uh, my knowledge at that point was just, if this number is lower, then this will happen, but it means I need to do this, etc., etc. When I got back from Pakistan and the people at the university saw the photos I'd taken there, uh, they started to give me some paid work. Uh, they gave other organizations my name and I started to do other work um, from time to time while I was still studying. This continued for a couple of years, but I can't remember whether I'd considered or hoped for a career in photography. But a defining moment in that respect came uh, New Year's Day in 2007, when I was in my final year at university. Uh, I received a phone call from an investment banker in London. Uh, he told me that he'd been given my details by a friend of his who knew one of my professors at university. Uh, he wanted to buy some prints for his house and said that he'd be in Glasgow uh, soon and he'd like to meet up. So the next month 
in the restaurant at the Ubiquitous Chip, uh, he said, I'd like to invest in you and help you start up a business. Uh, the basic idea was Dragon's Den. Uh, he'd give me the money I needed to start up, help me find work, give me advice, and take a cut of everything I earned. Um, there were other perks um, in the months that followed. Um, I sat first class on flights, I was picked up at airports by chauffeur driven Mercedes, I stayed in five star hotels, saw Stevie Wonder, <laughs> and uh, I saw places that aren't open to the public, like the restaurant at the top of the Gherkin here, and he paid for it all. In March 2007, he funded my first exhibition in the gallery offshore, the coffee shop on Gibson Street. After the opening reception, he told me to get my friends together, and he took us to a bar in Princess Square. Uh, we ran up a tower of a thousand pounds and he just threw an American Express at it. Um, as you can imagine, this was a happy and hopeful time. Uh, and it seemed too good to be true, and in the end it was. Uh, within a few months, we had some disagreements and we parted harmoniously. Uh, despite this, and in the end more important than the luxurious lifestyle I enjoyed for a while, uh, I learned a lot from him. Even if I disagreed with a lot of his ideas and his philosophy, he gave me the confidence to think that I could make a career out of doing what I love. And in fact, I was overconfident. Uh, three months later, uh, I graduated, registered as a sole trader, and I couldn't afford to pay my rent. So I took a part-time job in a lawyer's office, and on the side, did whatever photography work came around. Uh, nine months later, the office uh, let me go when the financial crisis hit. And that was for the best, I think, because I'd become comfortable there and stopped pushing myself. It also coincided with the first really notable job that I got as a photographer. And at this point, I'll go back in time a bit and give some background to that. When I was 18, I joined an online photography community called Enfolio, which consisted of a couple of hundred photographers, but really only 10 or so key members. <clears throat> and discovering Enfolio was a boon because it was 2004, and websites like this hadn't been taken over by 17-year-olds who just inflate each other's ego with <laughs> fatuous praise. And Infolio was a place you could get serious, well-thought-out responses. They had a rating system of 1 to 10. And when I was 18, I thought that my work was amazing. So I uploaded the best of it and sort of thought I'd just wait for the praise to flood in. Uh, instead, I got you know ratings of 6 and 7. People told me that this could be improved a lot. And that was kind of painful, but it was exactly what I needed to hear. And from then on, I sort of, it was much more mature, I think, much more considered approach uh, to the photos I took. Uh, two years later, Infolio effectively died. But through the site, I'd started online correspondences with two people who became very important to me, uh, sort of mentors. Uh, first is Eric Hans, who was in the 70s the staff photographer for Private Eye magazine. Um, during that time, he hung out with uh, geniuses like Dudley Moore and Peter Cook. That's one of his uh, photographs from that time. Um, his work is very, well, generally very different in style and content to my own, but it really <coughs> brought about a creative awakening in me. And I remember the day when this happened, I was sitting in a pub with my grandpa and uh, just taking a photograph of him, which was just intended as a snapshot. Um, but then I remembered a photograph Eric had taken and you know, I thought, why shouldn't this be a beautiful portrait, something special, just because it's of my papa in the pub? And so from that time on, I, I realized that any and every shot I took you know, had the potential to be something special, and I didn't divide between the times when I was just taking snaps and when I was setting out to take a serious photograph. Um, Ian Gav, or Ian Gavin, he uh, was another end folioer, and he was the guy whose work I would look at and think, damn, this guy is so good, what a prick. <laughs> uh, I first met both Eric and Ian uh, by arrangement in a London pub. It was 2007. I was soon to graduate and uh, tried to make a career in photography. And Ian told me that he was planning the same thing. He was going to uh, quit his 9 to 5 and become a photographer. 